So recently I've been doing a little series on my channel where we watch Don't Tell the Bride and I've been having a great time with that and I've been thinking to do the same sort of thing but with Wife Swap. So what I used to do is I would watch an episode of something and script some jokes to it and kind of find a structure to the video but then they took so long to make so now I just hope and pray that I'm funny enough on the spot by watching something and reacting in real time with it. So we're gonna do the same thing today with Wife Swap. Just a quick thing to say, I've gained a bunch of subscribers in the last few weeks. Please go in on my channel and watch the videos I did on Netflix's dating show, Sexy Beasts. I did four videos, I think, and they are some of the best videos I've ever made. So after this one, go give it a watch. And if you've already seen it, go give it another one. Sometimes I sit there and I'll watch my own videos for an hour and forget that it's me and go, this guy's good. And then I'll turn, look in the mirror and go, oh! I did some Googling to look for worst wife swap episodes. And I forgot that there was an American version of it. And I wanted to watch the British version. It's almost impossible to find anything to do with the UK wife swap. It's just all American. I did some more digging and I found a notorious episode from 2003. We're taking a blast to the past with this one. One of the wives in the episode, there's loads of articles about her, like how she's like a scumbag, all of this bollocks. I made sure to not read too much because I want to go into this blind. So without further ado, let's swap wives. If we swap wives, you'd be coming up empty handed, to be honest. One last thing quickly. I said it at the end of last video. If you guys are movie cucks like me, I have a letterbox to count, letterbox.com forward slash Kane's not good. Follow me, I make reviews there and write little witty one-liners. Meet the Spry family. Colin and Emma have been married for 10 years and have two children, Charlotte and Marcus. You gotta remember as well, this is nearly 20 years ago. So these are like grown adults now. The passage of time is relentless and mortality will come to us all. Meet the Bardsleys, Mark and Lizzie from Rochdale and their one-year-old twins, Anika and Anushka. Casey, aged 11, Elliot, aged 12, Melody, who's eight. How fucking many? It just keeps going. Vienna, aged three, Marky, aged four, and Saffron, aged two, makes eight. They've been putting in work in the bedroom. Dad's been laying ultimate pipe. <laughs> they don't even know the word latex, mad. The couples have never met, but have agreed the wives will swap homes, husbands and children for two weeks to see what they can learn about their own lives. Oh, imagine going from having two kids to eight. Oof. Like a nursery class. Colin and Emma Spry live in Devon. They own a £180,000 detached house. Okay, so already, yeah. Devon, beautiful. I've been to Devon. Crazy. Like, that's relevant. I've been to Devon once. So we've already got the fact that they've got a 180 grand detached house that in 20 years in this market that's probably worth 600 grand at this point so they're minted and then it's going to cut to the other ones we've got this piss poor family they've got eight kids and our own benefits and none of them work have two cars two children and take three holidays a year three holidays a year you know last time i went on holiday i was eight i've never been on holiday as an adult that's upsetting isn't it all of you Drop a tenner each to the PayPal and I'll go on holiday. <laughs> Quick shout out. Thank you so much for dropping a couple of squiddles. If you want to help, support the channel. Link in the description, man. Thanks. Cheers, man. I want to go on holiday. I'm a grown man and I've never been away. I've been to Wales. <laughs> we are aspiration, aren't we? We are ambitious. What did she say? We are an aspiration. We are aspiration, aren't we? We are aspiration, aren't we? She said aspiration. I thought she was being really cocky, saying like, we are goals. We're, we're couple goals, life goals. She a trendsetter with that sort of slang in 2003. Colin works as a nightclub manager and Emma has an office job. I was expecting IT or software engineer. What the fuck? I mean, life was different 20 years ago, innit? Like you could, you could survive off minimum wage, couldn't you? I don't know, I was a fetus. I wasn't. I'm not 19 years old currently. I'm a lot older than 19. Oh, oh I feel, feel sick. I feel everybody, again, has to have a set goal and put their all into reaching that goal. And that means working hard. There's one thing about this program, as if you have any idea what Wife Swap is, I didn't even explain the premise. I thought that it was clear enough in the title, Wife Swap. 
But what they do in this is they purposely get two completely different families. So it's really hard on both of them. So they've got this woman that's going, you've got to have ambitions and, you know, goals and aspirations. And then you're going to cut to the, oh, yeah, yeah I, f I fucking love benefits. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, as she's currently pregnant and she's still smoking nine a day. The lifestyle that I'd like to have would be a mansion, uh, a swimming pool, butler, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> See, I fucking knew it was going to do something like that. You've got, mm, I'd love to uh, just have a mansion, a butler. You know, you've got to have these goals. British TV show editing is class, isn't it? In Rochdale on a council house estate. What did I say? And I haven't seen this episode. I just knew it was going to happen. I'm surprised the narrator didn't sick up as he said council estate then. They live in Rochdale on a council estate. By the way, just a quick disclaimer here. I've grown up lived almost my entire life on a council estate. Swear to you, I'm not lying here. And this is quite frequent. It happens a couple times a year. A couple months ago, drive by, by the shops, actual guns, conf, 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 conf. And I'm chilling here trying to make people laugh. I'm struggling to struggle out. Get me out of the hood, bro. Fuck holiday, yeah? I want to move to a nice area. How about that? I have full reign, council house scum. <laughs> Lizzie and Mark Bardsley live with their eight children, five of whom are under four. Five of your kids are under four years old. It takes nine months to birth something. <laughs> a, a human being, not something. So you are pregnant non-stop. You give birth and man's doing this instantly and the stitches still haven't even healed. Ha! Being on your own with five under four is a bit of a scary experience. What is that accent? Are they northern? Wait, they said Rochdale, didn't they? Manchester, of fucking course they are. I went to Manchester once. Every time I spoke, people stared at me like, fucking southerner? What's a fucking southerner doing here? I will never be stepping foot in Manchester again. I felt like I was in purgatory. And I'm from London, so that's saying something. With both of them unemployed, Lizzie has to cope with feeding 10 mouths on benefits. Benefits, what? Couple pennies a week? There are some people that end up getting like tens of thousands of grands a year on benefits, like more than a full-time worker. And I feel like this is gonna be one of those because it's TV. They wanna get the, 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 the public riled up. Mark, how hungry are you? Starving. Not with my shopping bill, you're not. Mm, that's some delicious British cuisine right there. What is that? Potatoes and cauliflower. You living in the war times? What's that? Presentation of food wasn't always my fault, eh? I don't know what she just said then, genuinely. I'm not trying to play up for the cameras here. Presentation of food is my forte? Presentation of food wasn't always my fault, eh? Wasn't always my forte. At least she's self-aware because that looks like slop. In the Spry household, food presentation is Colin's responsibility. He's not doing a good job of it, is he? As well as working a 70-hour week, he cooks all the family meals. For a start, get those feet off my fucking screen. She's going to be in the other family and she's going to have to cook for 10 people and she's not even cooking for the four of them. And she's going to have a breakdown. Genuinely, how can you, as a grown adult, not know how to cook? If you've been a long-time subscriber, you might remember my Cooking with Kane videos. Those were for comedic effect. I'm not lying here, I'm a genuine chef. I cook all the time. And you want to see some proper presentation? Look at that right there. Some spring onions and sesame seeds as garnish, cousin. Rice made myself, no pre-made shit. Shut your mouth, man. Cooking with Kane actually, properly, one day? Maybe. Emma hasn't been near the cooker for six months. I'm certainly not a traditional housewife within this household. Colin is a modern husband. A modern husband 20 years ago. What the fuck's a modern husband now? So we have a modern, I would class it as a modern relationship. So in her head, a modern relationship is the stereotypical gender swap. That's what it is. We've got a modern relationship where he does all the cooking and I complain and drink beers while watching football. He does all the cooking. I mostly deal with the children. <laughs> That's some good dealing. Go fucking ooh the roop in the corner, you pricks. I'm reading Heat magazine. Yes, mother. 
God, that looks tasty, doesn't it? That looks like potatoes, mashed potatoes, and then frozen vegetables. I can taste that. You need a glass of water to get that down. <laughs> it's the day of the swap, and Lizzie is concerned about what Mark's new wife might be like. You're gonna fucking shag her, are you, Mark? You're gonna fucking put one in her as well, like you put Ace in me? So I don't know if she's a troll up or not, do I not? Just putting it politely. If you're not from the UK, can you guess what she just said? That person lives around 200 miles up north from me. We're from the same country. How different is that accent? I live in Trump a lot, that's been politely. What? What did you just say? Sorry, 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 sorry. You can mock my accent all you want, but that accent does my fucking head in. Colin would like the new wife to be glamorous, um, conscious about her appearance. I was going to say, well, he's not getting that, is he? Because she's not very glamorous. But why does he want the new wife of a TV show to be attractive to him? Is there some marital rural issues going on at home? Colin would like her to have, like, some really perky tits. You know, lovely bum. You know, put out when she's had a drink. You're not actually marrying each other. You're just swapping for two weeks for a TV show. The wives get to explore their new homes before they meet the families. Yeah, very poor shops at Sainsbury's. Is that an indicator of wealth, Sainsbury's? I know Waitrose is for the toffs. Oh, dishwasher. <laughs> she's taken aback by a fucking dishwasher. Oh, I love that. Each wife has written a manual as a guide for running their homes. What is your average combined income after tax? Combined income after tax. 37 and a half thousand from benefits. See, I told you, I told you, nearly 40 grand on benefits. 40 grand in 2003 as well. To be fair, it's 10 people. So that's probably still scraping by. But still, 38 grand on benefits is mad. Also, I've probably cut a lot of it out. It's just them reading back and forth what their rules are. And posh ones, the dad does everything. And then the northerns, oh, we do nothing. That's basically it. I'm not putting it in because it's shit. 27,600. Emma seems slightly stunned that the Bardsleys are on £10,000 more than the Sprys. Oh, wait. Wait. They... So because earlier they said they've got a house, 180 grand or whatever it was, detached house, I thought that they were on silly money. You know when he said, oh, I'm a nightclub owner or whatever. I was thinking, fuck, how are you making money like that? They are on less money than the benefit owners. No wonder. No wonder this was like a controversial episode. Oh, we hate the poor people, don't we? Oh, her nose made a mad noise then, didn't it? <laughs> Funny joke, innit? Because she did that at the same time the door opened. Please, give the video a like. Thank you. Hello? Hi. Who are you then? <laughs> God, what one are you then? It's just a choir of children crying. Oh, that's my personal hell. You're Elliot, <laughs> the eldest. And that's me. Casey. Saffron. Anika. Anika. Anushka. Anushka. It's a bit mad that, like, you've got Casey, then fucking Anushka, someone's Russian nan. To inform you, I don't cook. Right. All right? <laughs> <laughs> I have to just warn you that I don't cook because at home I have a modern relationship. What does that mean? It means that I don't cook, all right? There's Rochdale, right? And in Rochdale, you have all the little towns. So that clip alone has dated this video. She's shown where Rochdale is on a map in a book. I think we're going to get on like a house on fire. I hope so. She's very bubbly, got lots to say, lots of personality. Um, Northern lass with yeah, just a real spark and just hope we have a great time together. We try and bring some fun to the household. Yes, yeah, so uh, the first thing I noticed about her was she's got really massive tits and you know, a lovely northern lass. Uh, hopefully I might uh, get myself some action with my new wife. <laughs> I don't know. Pack it in, Colin. Also, I'm recording this. It is 3.30 p.m. It's getting dark outside. Hello? Can I get some sun, please? That's just pure grey. There's nothing but clouds out there. I would ideally like to be in bed just after 10 tonight, so I don't want it to be a late one. I'd like to be in bed just after 10, you know. Um, so, Colin, what are you doing? Why are you just in trousers there? Well, you know, 
got a lovely northern lass in here. And she's got eight kids, so she must love a bit of that. You know what I mean? Colin, mate! You're not actually married to her! Alright? It's for a show! The way that he dresses. Even down to his socks. His old man and no balls. God, alright. You're wearing a fucking Adidas hoodie, love. And a man without any balls is no good. <sighs> Excuse me. That's a lager. So, that's a man with a big set of balls. We've got a man that's on the beers while having to look after eight children and he's getting plastered, brother. Now that's a man with a big set of fucking nuts on him. The only thing keeping me sane is beer and my cigarettes. That sounded like a confession before you've seen someone murder suicide. <laughs> He's sitting in the, the children's room. You saw the bunk bed in the back. He's drinking, smoking. So the, the only way I can cope with this is by alcohol and nicotine. If you're watching this, I'm already dead. And so's everyone else in the house. There's nothing like somebody else cooking for you. You can really enjoy the fucking meal. Like we're a real pisser. When I found out she's not doing much cooking. Why is he talking like that? He's talking like those guys that try and sound more sexy on Snapchat voice notes. Pure vocal fry. Ain't nothing better than someone cooking a meal for you, cos that would eat pissy. The wives begin their first week in their new homes. Lizzie has agreed to take on Emma's part-time office job. It's her first day's work in ten years. She's had a good life, and she? 38 grand a year for not working? Oh, one could dream. Well, I can't play this bit because it's Dolly Parton. Working nine to five. What a way to make living begin if you're out. If taking and no giving, baby, who's your Look at those screens. I remember having my first PC I got in 2004. It was a proper brick like that, man. 2003, life was different, yeah? But the fact that he's smoking around all those kids is fucking insane. My mum, when I was younger, used to work in a pub. She was a bartender. Didn't wank them off, that's pulling the pint, you know? She's not wanking the, the patrons off. But I will wank my patrons off. Patron, link in the description. And I used to have to go there after school because there was no smoking ban at this point. The smoking ban came in 2007. When I was younger than that, I used to have to go to the pub and it was just, my lungs at the age of seven, absolute f infested in tar. At the Bardsleys, Emma's not been faring so well. I think she's getting a bit stressed though. Cause you're doing fucking nothing, Mark! You're sitting in the den! You're sitting in a fucking kid's room, smoking and drinking, and then having a moan cause you're not getting a dinner cooked for you, you fucking whatless prick! Sorry! Sorry you had to see me like that, okay? For Colin and Emma, romantic meals out are an important part of the marriage. And tonight, it's Lizzie's turn. Yes, man, Colin absolutely tenting over that. Gets to go out on a date with a new woman. Oh. oh yeah. Dad, Dad, Look, he's hiding it. He's hiding his boner. He's got his coat in front of it. <laughs> what did you say yesterday? You scrub up really well. You certainly do. So you said you scrub up really well. Well, you, you certainly do. I can't do a Devonshire accent. I just went Australian. You said you scrub up really good. Earlier, Colin had been showing off pictures of Emma to Lizzie, and conversation turns to how things might be going in the other house. So now you've seen a picture of Emma, and she's in your household. How do you feel about that situation? So, are you feeling intimidated by my wife? Do you think that your husband's going to sling one up her? I'd personally be up for that. So, um, any chance later on we'll see tits? Colin! I don't know whether or not Emma were going to make a pass at my husband. If she's had a drink, you don't. Uh, I didn't know that. I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know that I'd fancy you. I mean, fucking hell, Colin. Just do something to me. I won't shag you right here on table. After being told by Lizzie's mum, sister and neighbours that Lizzie doesn't do as much work as the manual suggests, she's determined to confront Mark, who's just returned from the pub. Of course he's come back from the pub. That's a man with balls, remember? That's somebody else being who? You? 
Well, what gives you that impression? Pardon? What gives you that impression? There's not much that I'm showing here. I already know that I'm going to edit a lot of this out because it's shit and there's nothing that I can really say. So I'll just sum it up. They're having an argument and it's not that entertaining. I know that you at home don't care about what they're saying, so that's why I'm not keeping it in. But they're just having a moan. These two having a moan. These two having a moan. Uh, who cares? I don't. Lizzie has been allowed one call home. Once again, this episode showing its age, she's gone to a phone box. There were mobiles in 2003 though. Why? What do you think of her? Not bad, not all right. So you don't think she's pretty, you don't fancy her then? No, no. You sure? Yeah. There's only one woman in my life and you know who that is. It's me. It's you. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> this is filth. I don't want to see them have a conversation about how hot he thinks that the wife is. And then for him to just pure burp his back out, man. Emma? Uh -huh. Have you done the bottles? No, oh, she's still at the back door crying. Oh. <laughs> that delivery was quite funny. Emma, grow up, you fucking bastard. Do baby's bottles. <laughs> just don't want to talk about it. soft came to sort her head out. Wife's a bitch, isn't it? Finally, something worth watching. I've been sitting here for 15 minutes, roughly, and nothing's happened, and I've cut it all from the video. She shouldn't be such a lazy cow at home, then, should she? Don't pass your foot around her, man. Go on, Mark. Go and fucking batter her. Go on. Get her fucking Stella in. You beat her to bits. Tell her to fucking do the baby snappies, or I'm going to fucking come over there. I'm not fucking pussy footing around her. Listen, only you tell me what to fucking do. I have got a mind of my own, you know what I mean? And he starts switching on her instead. Listen, you fucking keep telling me what to do. When you get home, I'll fucking batter you as well. I'll have multiple Stellas, and I'll fucking... I'll double t I'll fucking take you both on. I'll take you and Emma on, you fucking keep telling me what to do. Lizzie has declared her determination to last out the two weeks. And as usual, her lift arrives for work. Liz, Lizzie, it's 8.30, you should be up and ready for work by now. Liz, I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in, okay? So uh, keep your baps out, please. Liz, please do not cover up your baps. I'm coming in. Ah, oh, you've covered up your baps, Liz. Lizzie has been awake all night smoking and fretting about what might be going on in the other house. And the smoking has brought on her asthma. <laughs> That's how fucking COVID started, I tell you that. <laughs> Liz is the fucking culprit. I'm not sure if this is the right amount. I'm thinking there are nine people. <laughs> that looks dire. She's just put a couple bits of peppers on top of sausages. She's chefing it, man. Who's in the oven? It is. Oh, sausage and bell peppers. Oh. <laughs> Can't wait to get that down me. She's ready. Um, yeah. That looks evil. Oh, that's given me goosebumps. Oh my lord, my whole arms are filled. Oh, I got my hair standing up looking at that. Perfect. Is it? Look at that. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. He looked at that and said he cannot wait to scram that down. Look at that mess. That's a 10 out of 10. It's really good. Houston, we have a British moment right here. That's hurt me. That's a 10 out of 10. Lizzie calls the other house. She's reached breaking point. I've got a message off Liz to say, Emma, you got to pack your bags and get out of the house now. So this was a terrible first episode to pick because they've they've given up. I don't know what's got into her. She's just gone totally off her fucking head. Look at that Christina Aguilera poster on its last legs in the corner of that room. It's time for everyone to sit down and talk. How Keep many days did you go to work, Liz? One. One. Because I'm chronic asthmatic. Because I'm chronic asthmatic. I don't understand people that have asthma that smoke. You want to be in pain every day. Is that what you want? That's and you've true. got children as well, haven't you, that are chronic yes, asthmatic? Smoking around asthmatic children is not good. Dr. Emma in the house. Dr. Emma in the house saying something really, really simple. You know children going, growing up, you shouldn't be smoking around them. Oh, you... Well, you got a fucking PhD, have you? Oh, don't tell me what to do in front of my fucking kids. Uh, you're harming them. You're 
harming your children. Can I see your credentials? You fucking imbecilic woman. Well, well, baby, no, 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 Shout at me and dictate to me. I'm not I, dictating anything. That's your this. wife. Oh, I'm, I'm not. not. Don't sit there flattening your eyelids at my husband, you fucking tart. She's having a meltdown because she's insecure that Emma was going to try and get with her husband. She thought that Mark Marcus was going to be, you know what, I've had a couple of Stellas. I'm going to give it to her. Well, we know your moral been. values, don't we? OK, my response to that, that comment, Liz, is when you fall madly in love with somebody, you don't see logic or reason. You rule from the heart and not the head. Am I in fucking year 10 English now reading Shakespeare? I don't know if I've cut it out, but... Oh, I don't care at this point. Emma and Colin, yeah? Colin, specky boy, was married. Emma came along, ruined the marriage. That's why the other two are all fucking insecure and shit. And then that's why she's gone, you, we know your fucking morals. She's gone, well, well, let, may I read you a passage from Shakespeare? A rose falls deeply. Shut the fuck up, all of you. You realise you love them even more. Even what? You realise you love them even what? Moa? Moa. Moa. I love them even more. It's the first time I've seen you with emotion this whole week, Liz. She is normal. <laughs> and that's the end? That was no Don't Tell the Bride. It's me, Editing Kane. If you remember in the beginning of the video, I said that there was an article about her that I didn't read because I didn't want it to be spoiled. As I finished editing this video, I thought, let me have a read of that, see if I can add any juicy updates. And she apparently went on Celebrity Fit Club and lost some weight. She went on The Weakest Link and she posed naked for a Sunday newspaper. And then she was fined for benefit fraud in 2004 and was found guilty of child cruelty in 2007. And then her marriage ended. And Lizzie's also on Twitter that I've found. And she's a nan. So the kid's in this episode have gone on to have kids of their own. And you know what these sort of people are like. They're the ones that buy ad specific slogans on t-shirts. You know what I mean? And they've probably seen a Facebook sponsored post and bought this for their grandbaby. <laughs> Back to me during the day. If you got this far in the video, leave a comment saying, Kane, nice baps. Here's a video for you to go and watch. Have some fun, share me with your friends, and we will be the biggest channel on YouTube by Wednesday.